Hi, I'm John Lebensholt, and this is the second video in a series of videos where we're going to be building a very simple PayPal shopping cart uh, using MAMP on the Mac, which is a stack of technologies which sit on Mac OS X, that's the first M, Apache, uh, MySQL, which is the third M, and PHP, which is the P. Uh, there's an equivalent on Windows, or there's several equivalents that has, take the form of WAMP, W-A-M-P, and on Linux it's LAMP, which is L-A-M-P. But the technology stack is essentially the same. And we're not going to be doing anything with MySQL databases, so it's just going to be essentially Apache and PHP. We're also going to be storing our data in an XML file. So I'm just going to bring up, this is uh, Eclipse, which is going to be the development environment that I'm going to be using. And here is a file called store.xml, where I'm actually storing the data for our store. So what is an XML file? An XML file is a bunch of nodes, which you can see here. They're basically just tags, which can hold other tags. And all XML files will have a root node, which in this case is called items. And then you have a whole bunch of subnodes, which in turn can have other subnodes. And basically, we've got three products here, and we are describing them using tags that make sense for our information architecture. To put things simply, these tags describe our data. So we've got an ID, a title, a description, an image tag, and a price tag. Now, if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, this looks a lot like HTML, well, you're, you're right. The only difference is that where HTML describes text that's being presented for a web page on a web browser, here we're using the same style of language to describe data. And so we've got tomato soup, we've got pasta, and we've got fresh cumin, which you saw in the last video, with their respective prices. The other thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this tool called Eclipse, which you're seeing right here, as opposed to a text editor. Now, I'm a big fan of this text editor on the Mac called BBEdit, and I'll show you that you, know, you can basically open files in the same way. Uh, however, it can be a little cumbersome when you're dealing with a lot of little files, or you're like, I've got a shopping cart class here, which you're seeing, and you know, I've got uh, maybe a functions file here. And while you do get syntax highlighting, like the blue and the pink here, what you don't get is you don't get auto completion, which I find really handy when I want to describe the code that I'm writing. So if I open the same functions file here in Eclipse, the advantage of using something like an IDE or an integrated development environment is that it manages the whole project for me. So if I type get underscore and I do control space, I'm actually going to get a whole bunch of different functions. Some of them are functions I've written, like get XML catalog, and some of them are functions that are provided by PHP. So that's, for example, get magic quotes GPC. Hopefully you're not using magic quotes, but there it is. Or get call stack or get browser. These are PHP functions. And the same thing applies to objects. So what we're going to do in this video, and I'll go back to this, is we're going to be creating a shopping cart object, a shopping cart class. And when you're building out classes, it's really helpful to have auto-completion. So I can type in something like sc equals new shopping cart. And then I can do SC, and if the shopping cart class is actually referenced, then I'll actually see things like empty cart, or get item cost, or get item quality, and so on and so forth. So it becomes really handy. Hold on, let me just do that again so you can see. So you have add item, empty cart, get item cost. How we're essentially building a language that describes our application and auto-completion and having an integrated development environment just makes that a little easier. And it's free.
so why not? In this video series, you're probably going to hear me use the word refactoring. And refactoring is this nerd term that refers to refining the code that you've already written. And you refactor so that your code has more meaning, so that it makes more sense. Uh, also, when you refactor your code, you provide yourself the opportunity to look at what you've written and say, well, could this be written a little better? Does it really do what I'm actually trying to do? And also, it lets you uh, make sure that you don't repeat yourself. And that's one of these programmer principles, which is called dry, which is basically just don't repeat yourself. So I'm going to give you an example of this right now. Assuming that, now this is in our functions file, but this could be in any PHP file. I'm just going to echo a list item. Now, list items are pretty standard in PHP, and I'm going to have a variable here, so it's going to be list value, and I'm going to create another li there. Now, we've all done this before. Uh, list item is basically just one node in a one column list in HTML. So if I had something like list value equals hello world, then this would echo a list item with hello world in the middle. So far, so good. Now, let's say I want to echo a whole bunch of different values. I could do this, and then I could change what list value is to be hello world 2 and hello world 3 and every single time list value would change and it would echo itself but you'd notice if you looked at this that there's actually a lot of repetition and we can clean this up quite a bit so I'm gonna provide I'm gonna do a very quick little refactoring of this a little quick refinement I'm gonna create a new variable here called list values and it's gonna be an array I'm going to have hello world and I'm going to have hello world 2 and I'm going to have hello world 3 and then I'm going to use a for each statement to essentially refactor this. So I'm going to say for each list values as value echo value and we don't need this anymore and so what we've done is we've essentially refactored our code uh, we don't even even need these curly braces so we've taken something that was originally six lines of code and we've made it three lines of code and actually the code is more descriptive we can very easily get a grasp of what this pattern does and means uh, just by looking at these three lines rather than having a whole bunch of duplication in our code. Now, we could even take this a step further. If we noticed that hello world was being repeated and actually there was concatenation involved, then we could have a prefix calling it hello world. And here it would be a prefix and this would be a prefix plus the two and this is the prefix plus three or concatenated with three again same code another refactoring so if we change hello world now we only have to change it in one place and that's oftentimes what you'll see and what we're going to be doing in these videos when we find configuration variables, variables that define, for example, where our catalog is being stored. We don't want that to be muddied around everywhere. We just want to have one place where we can define this constant variable and we can refer to it. So that's a bit about refactoring. You'll see me do it many times, uh, but I just wanted to give a very simple example of what that looks like. And the last thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at PayPal and the PayPal sandbox. And we're going to be creating a developer account with PayPal. 
I personally find that their website for developers is a little confusing. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to create pre-configured accounts for the buyer and the seller. And we're going to look at very briefly what the different offerings that PayPal has are and where this particular shopping cart fits into that. And it's a very simple shopping cart. So we're going to start by using their buttons and we're going to modify them to build a bit of a, a shopping cart page. And then from there, we're going to send that data to PayPal. And then from there, that's how we get our money. So in the next video, we're going to start looking at XML uh, practically and using it to build out our shopping cart. Thanks for listening.